What's up guys? It's been a long time I feel like since I've posted a magic video on this channel. Uh, but I figured, you know, there's a new format in Arena that I think is very exciting. So I thought this was a good opportunity to jump back in to some Magic the Gathering. So in case you weren't aware, there's a new mode called Arena Cube Draft. I think it's only around for like the next week or two. But I am hoping that this will become like a regular recurring thing because it's really awesome. Basically, we're drafting. If you don't know how a cube works, it's like drafting like a normal booster draft, except it's a preset list of cards that are kind of just randomized into packs. So this is just all of, I guess, what they thought were some of the cool and interesting cards that are available on re Arena throughout all the sets in Arena. So... There's a lot of cool cards in here, stuff going back to like Ixalan, Dominaria, as well as the new sets. So there's some cool themes that have emerged, some cool deck possibilities. We're going to give it a shot. 4k gold, kind of expensive, but uh, you stand to make some good gold back as well if you do well. So let's see how this goes. And this is going to be a real human draft, meaning we are actually drafting against other people and not against AIs. Uh, which was what we used to only have in Arena, was bot drafting, which is a lot less effective for actually learning how the format works. So anyway, let's take a look at some of these cards. Settle the Wreckage, great card generally. Uh, you know, just like a pretty effective board wipe. Mythos of Nethroi is okay too. This is just like a premium removal spell. Jai Immolating Inferno, you have to watch out. If you don't remember the Dominaria set, they introduce these legendary sorceries, and they seem so strong, and they are really strong, but as you can see that text, legendary sorcery, you can cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. So that's going to be a pretty difficult uh, requirement to fulfill in a draft format. So generally, I think these legendary sorceries are not something you want to be looking at early on. Uh, I'm leaning settle, to be honest. Uh, Llanowar Elves is also totally fine, uh, but I feel like the two best cards are definitely Settle and Mythos, but I'm just going to take Settle, just generally a, a solid card uh, that doesn't commit us too hard because it's only one color. Uh, what else we got here? God Eternal Bantu is pretty good. Akroma's Memorial. Creatures you control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste protection from black and red so you can see this is an old card from m13 because the historic anthology cards are also included uh, a lot of them are in this cube as well uh what are we gonna pick though that's the tough question sacred foundry is good like just having fixing is generally good staggering insight i don't think is that good unless we're already locked into a creature heavy strategy uh, Skycat Sovereign can be okay if I think we're going into like blue white flyers, but it seems a little early to speculate on that. Bone Crusher Giant is probably just straight up the best card in the pack. Uh, I'm a little bit torn between Giant and the Foundry, but I think let's take the Giant. We might get opportunities for fixing later, and I'm worried uh, if we pass this Giant, uh, that you know the next player will go into red since red will look pretty open. So. Hopefully I can lock down red by taking this giant. Speaking of red, Goblin Chain Whirler, man. This is an incredibly good card. It is three red pips, which is a little bit tough to cast. Uh, other options are maybe like the Fortress or the Chapel are both fine. Uh, Immortal Sun, I don't know. This just seems a little slow. If we're not in green, we're not going to be ramping. Uh, I really want to take the Chain Whirler. We might end up just being red. I think it's got to be this. E2 Extinction is good, too. There's a lot of good cards in this pack, but I just think the Chain Whirler is, is so good. He's got to go in here. Oh, Robber as well. We're getting quite an aggressive-looking red list going here. Other options are maybe Gideon Blackblade, solid card. But again, like we're, we're kind of stretching our mana requirements here. We can't have too many white pips and red pips. That's going to be really hard. Uh, Rex Age is a great card, but we're not really looking at green yet. Shark Typhoon, also an amazing card. Reese the Redeemed is really good as well. That's actually something to consider. You don't need green to play this card. You can play him purely off white. Uh, so that's an interesting idea. We can get a more aggressive creature token strategy. 
But I'm thinking I'm just going to take the robber and let's see if we can just finagle this into a strong mono red aggro deck. Uh, Rimrock Knight is pretty good. Active Treason is pretty good as well. Idyllic Tutor, I think, is actually a really, really good card uh, in the cube. There are a lot of amazing enchantments uh, for you to find. Uh, but I don't know if that's really going with the rest of my strategy here. So I'm torn between these two. Probably just go Rimrock. Uh, that, it's just a generally more useful card. And Active Treason is like... There are multiple effects that do the Act of Treason thing. Uh, so we might be able to find another one if we really want. <clears throat> so uh, we might end up just dropping white here. Settle doesn't really go with the mono red aggro strategy anyway. Like Boros is definitely a deck in this cube. Like Boros aggro. But would that deck run Settle? Probably not. So. Alright. Let's see. If once our... Uh, neighbor makes his pick here i'm hoping that maybe i'm cutting red enough that we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about the other people around us drafting red like most formats you know cube is similar to regular booster draft in the sense that you just got to identify what's open um the big difference generally between cube draft and like booster draft is generally the power level is going to be a lot higher because there are multiple rares in each pack uh, and these are all generally like good cards since these are specially selected from this giant pool of cards in arena They're almost all good cards. So the power level is going to be high It's not going to be that much of a problem to get bombs in uh, a cube like this So you are going to want to worry a little bit more about fixing and stuff like that because odds are you're going to get the bombs The question is just uh, are you going to be able to actually play them on time? so Riel is an amazing card, but Blue seems like a lot of people are drafting it. We haven't seen that many good blue cards other than like the Sharknado, which has probably already been taken. And whoever I pass this to will take this as well. So I think Riel is out of the question here. I'm torn between Temple, just a solid land that leaves us open to maybe adding blue in the future. Weatherlight is fine too. It's not like the most aggressive card, but we do have a ton of creatures that can crew it. Uh, Bonders Enclave is okay, but I think our deck is just going to be too fast to play it. I think we're going to go Weatherlight. I didn't even notice like how low my uh, time was getting there. Uh, hmm, Fanatical Firebrand, nice aggressive card. Or we could uh, Integrity Intervention is pretty good too if we think we'll end up in Boros Colors. Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two. I mean, I feel like the Firebrand is just better. If we're going to be all out aggressive, I think I want this guy. Fabled Passage was a reasonable uh, option too, I think, but Dire Fleet Daredevil. First strike, <laughs> you get to exile an instant or sorcery from the opponent's graveyard and cast it. That's an odd one. I think we just want Dragon Fire here. Three damage to Creature or Planeswalker. Just a good card. Um, None of these are really relevant to us. Uh... I'm thinking about just getting Evolving Wilds, just in case we end up splashing or something and think we need the fixing. A Fairy Guide Mother is not bad either, but I'm like feeling less and less like we're going to end up in white, but we'll see. Uh, I think I'll just take the Devil here, just to speculate. We might end up adding black, who knows. Venerable Knight is an option too, but we have like literally one other Knight, which is Rimrock Knight, so I'll take the Devil here. Uh, I think I'll take the Extinction for the same reason. All That Glitters is a decent card, but we don't really have that many artifacts and enchantments. Wow, Reese was opened. He was he, he was not picked, man. Ooh, maybe white, White's starting to look a little bit better now. Uh, hey, the Act of Treason wield. We might end up not playing it, but... You know, wow, Riel wield? This is some weird stuff, man. Uh, very slightly punished for not taking the blue-red temple there. Ooh! <laughs> These are some good cards. <laughs> Rome Club Giant is such an amazing card. It's a shame that it doesn't really fit with our red cards, you know? This is such a good card. If we were in some kind of white white control strategy, having Settle and Realm Cloaked would be so insane. But I'm thinking Ferocidon. This is one of the better aggressive cards. 
keeps him from gaining life. It's a good body, usually hard to block on turn three. Flame sweep is maybe an option, but we'll half the time just end up clearing our own board. I think we got to go with the Ferocidon. Got a nice little dragon or a dinosaur sound effect that is. Oh my gosh, look at these red cards. A castle is good, but I think we have to go with Anax. This is one of like the best payoffs for being mono red. I feel like we have no choice. The castle might wheel too. Wow, there's so many good ones. Shiv and Fire is good too. This is insane, dude. Anax it is though. Great, great card. Uh, Frenzy is very good. Frenzy is excellent. But Heroic Reinforcements is amazing too. Scorch Spitter is okay. If we had, like, I feel like Scorch Spitter is maybe better in red black because it enables, uh, you know, the thing where you, if you deal damage to them, cards become cheaper or whatever. Dragon Skull Summit is okay too, but I'm just feeling Frenzy here. It's a good source of card advantage in mono red. I think at this point I'm just gonna start getting rid of the white cards. I don't think I don't think we're gonna do anything other than mono red here. We're just getting such good cards here, and even more too. These are all amazing to light up the stage spectacle. That's the mechanic I was talking about earlier. Kind of makes me wish I'd taken Scorch Spitter. Oh my God, Sarkin! Like this card is probably just a little too slow, and we don't have any other Planeswalkers. Tectonic Giant could be kind of our top end here. Yeah, I mean, this is a good aggressive card, or we could just go with one of these kind of card advantage engines. These are both great too, man. This is a hard pick. I feel like because we have Frenzy, we might want to keep the mana cost lower. Oh, jeez, man. All right, I'm taking Light Up. Oh, Legion War Boss. <laughs> We're getting such gas, dude. It's got to be War Boss. Glindhorn is fine, but War Boss is one of the best red cards. Okay. Woo. I'm thinking Weatherlight's definitely getting cut here. It's just too slow. Uh, but we'll wait and see. We we might we might need some top end. You never know. Um man, we are getting gas here, man. It's a good thing like you can tell a Torbran. <laughs> Torbrand versus Shock is actually very hard. And let me... There's 10 cards. So we have to weigh the possibility that maybe one of these wheels, you know? Oh, my God. But it's probably not going to happen. These are both so good. Ugh, Shock is good with Light Up. Shock... Ugh, but I'm, I'm taking Torbrand, okay? I'm taking Torbrand. We're going for the bigger upside card. And besides, there's other sources of removal. We might find one. Dreamstalker Manticore. I don't think that is going to happen. Electrostatic Field. I don't know. None of these are that good. Uh, we'll take the Manticore, but we'll probably end up cutting it. It's pretty much just a 3-mana 4-2. Uh, Squee is all right. But the thing is, we're, we are not going to have an excess of mana. Do you know what I mean? Like, We're, we're, we're going to be curving out pretty consistently, so... I feel like we don't want to spend three mana on a 2-1 at any point in the game. Angrath can be good just because he lets you get in. Wow, we got a little voice line. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, Angrath lets one of your creatures go through unblocked because of the menace. I think we take Cave here. I just don't see Flame Sweep as something our deck wants. We're just going to clear our own board. Uh, I think Forgotten Cave is pretty good. Oh my god, the Embereth wield. Yeah, that's... That's the pick for sure. Oh, the spitter wheel. We're getting everything, guys. No no punish for for not taking the spitter first opportunity. We Ah, the tectonic giant. Everything's wheeling. Now we just have to see will the shock wheel. I doubt it, but you never know. If the shock wheels, we are in business, baby. I can't even imagine. Oh my god. Come on. Come on, baby. Well, the Buccaneer is here. We're probably not going to play this, right? When you discard a card, it's like anti-synergy. I'll sideboard it, but you never know. So this will be the shock pack, right? Electrostatic field, probably not going to play that. Okay, we got some more opportunities here. Rowdy Crew, draw three cards, discard two cards at random. 
Oh, that's an interesting card, but I feel like we have too many four drops. I don't know if we play this or Banefire, to be honest. I guess we just take Banefire because maybe we can use it as a finisher. This has good synergy with Glinthorn, but like, I don't really feel like that's the game we're playing. We're just going to be aggressive and kill you really, really fast. Strike. It's got to be got to be lightning strike. A little bit of payback for uh, missing that shock, I guess. Kill and Fiend is fine, but we don't really even have that many instants and sorceries. It's just got to be lightning strike. Um, Thunder Raptor, again, we don't have that many instants and sorceries. I think we just take the stomping ground just in case. Just in case there's some green we want to splash. Hardfire is only okay, I think. We don't really have any ways of like generating tokens, although we do have Anax. We'll see. We might end up playing it, but... Sacking a creature is not usually going to be something we want to do in this deck, I feel. Uh, actually, we do have some good token generation. We got War Boss. We got Annex. I could see that going in. Uh, wow, these are all good, dude. They're all so good. Uh, so you can see we have very few two drops. We only have four. So I feel like we take the Pyromancer here. We have enough mana sinks that I don't think we need Devil's Play. Maybe this is stupid because Devil's Play is a good card and so is Skewer the Critics, but I just think we need the Pyromancer because we need proactive turn two plays. We're very low on those, actually. Uh, and hopefully at least one of those will wheel. Although, again, like I don't even know if I'll take... Wow, Prophecy. Easy pick. Another good two-mana removal spell. Although that is... It's more reactive two-mana plays, which I'm not really into. Fight with Fire is good, but like... I don't know. We have a decent amount of creature removal. I think we actually want the melee because usually sacrificing a mountain is not going to be that big of a downside to us. I mean, obviously this is a great card in a limited environment, but I just feel like we're too aggressive to be playing a three mana removal spell. I'll take this one. Wow, Rage Hound. All right, that's another good proactive two drop. That's exactly what I was looking for. So we're cutting Weatherlight, no doubt about that. Uh, wow, we actually, two of these are lands, so we actually don't have to cut that much, probably. We're definitely going to run 16 lands, so we need, uh, we need 24 playables. We have 23 in the deck right now. We, I mean, it's possible I could even justify going to 15 lands, because we do have a cycling land, but probably a little too aggressive maybe on the draw we can go to 15 oh wait but that <laughs> there's no sideboarding it's best of one wow the rowdy crew wheel probably not gonna play it for four mana is a lot of mana but we'll probably cut angrath too huh is there any black card that we would realistically actually run there's like mayhem devil but we don't have any sack outlets i think we just take kiln fiend I don't know if we'll play it. We'll, we'll, we'll do a count of instants and sorceries later, see if it seems good. I guess we can do it right now while we're waiting. Kiln Fiend, where are you at, buddy? Plus three plus oh, that is a lot. All right, how many instants and sorceries? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine is actually kind of a lot. Uh, wow, Lotus Field is another interesting one with... Uh, another interesting one if we end up running black, but... Maybe we'll take Bastion. I, I don't know. We're not, we're not going to run black, but like... You never know. I don't want to complete... Oh, Skewer! Look at that, man. Ridiculous. Red was ridiculously open. Wow, did we really did we really need that for a two man a two mana uncommon? Did we really need to hear his his scream? That was ridiculous. All right, this deck looks absolutely insane. I'm gonna be really disappointed if I at least if I don't at least go three three with this. Uh, so we are gonna cut one mountain, sixteen lands. So we only need to make one cut. Uh, looking at the curve, we seem very heavy on threes. What are some reasonable threes to cut? Let's just look through and see if there's any cards that jump out as just like being bad. Um, 
Act of Treason with no sack outlets, right? We have no creature sack outlets. Uh, Dream Stalker Manticore is fairly weak too, although we do have a decent amount of instants as we saw. Uh, those cards are all amazing. I, I kind of like Angrath. Like, we don't have that many four drops, right? We just have three. Four. Four is is uh, kind of a lot. All right. there. I think there are three potential cuts here. The three I'm leaning towards are Treason, uh, Manticore, and Angrath. Treason is good with sack outlets, but... As far as I can see, I have literally zero. Oh, I have Heartfire. That's a sack outlet. Would I play this? I mean, it, it generally seems good, right? And then maybe we cut like melee or something? Man, this deck seems insane. Alright, maybe we cut Manticore here. Keep the treason. And now that we have that, Angreth becomes a little better, right? Maybe we cut Banefire. It seems too slow for our deck. Yeah, I, I like this. I like this a lot. Our curve is like a little bit on the high side for running Frenzy, but... I think this will be really good. Plus, like, um, uh, Frenzy and Light Up the Stage work well together. Because Light Up the Stage, we can still use the card draw because the cards don't go into our hand. I think this deck's great. We're going for it, guys. All right, wish me luck. Again, the goal, if I can get to three wins, I'll be, I'll be happy. But I'm hoping the deck can do even better because, honestly, this deck seems insane. But we'll see how it goes. We just got, like, every good red card. We really did get, like, every good red card. It's kind of insane. Alright. Malneric. Let's go, buddy. Uh, a little slow. A little slow hand here. Kind of want a mulligan for a one or two drop. Well, I mean, technically, another slow hand, but I feel like at this point we have to keep it. Um, I think I'll put back the giant. Seems too slow. Oh my god, can I draw one or two drop? Pretty please? There he is. Got there. Yeah, this is a decent card for sure. Next turn might be slightly awkward. <laughs> Although he is red. He's red. So a non-red permanent. So red cap, we might not have to sack a mountain. I love my little owl boy here. Yeah, three drop would be ideal. And I mean, we saw like three is my, my heaviest card slot. Okay, that's not bad. We can't replay it because it does get exiled. But okay, awkward. Awkward. <laughs> this is an instant, though. So maybe. Uh, okay, yeah, we're doing this. We'll still take the two damage, but... It is what it is. Alright, now the question is Torbran or Frenzy or neither. Um, I'm thinking, I mean, we kind of want to empty our hand, right? I'm thinking Torbran comes down. And then next turn, like, next turn, we, we won't have played a land. Like, I already played a land this turn, so if there's a land on top, like, that's a tough situation. But next turn, we could potentially play this, play a land, maybe play a one drop, whatever. Actually get some card draw off this the same turn we play it. Alright, Ferocidon. So I am free to attack into this. Oh, wow. I think it's got to be double two drop here. Mm, 
The question is, do we attack first? I mean, what could he have? How could he kill this with just blue mana? He could bounce it, though. But he would just bounce it in, uh, in response to the trigger anyway. I think we attack first. Hopefully he doesn't buff his Ferocidon. That would really suck. So yeah, the reason he can't block here is obviously Torbrand's going to do 4 damage. So this is just to bait out a counter spell if he has it. I would rather this get countered than the Pyromancer. Alright, we are taking one here. Which is a little uncomfortable, but... I'm thinking it won't be that big of a problem. And this does 4 now. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow, he he sacked it. I guess he doesn't need the mana. Woo! <laughs> Don't give it a plus. Oh, he did. Oh, I can't kill that now. Oh, wait, I can. I can. This does six. And this does three. Good lord. Is he just dead? Four. Six. Oh, he's mega dead, dude. I have to I have to sacrifice Viashino, but that's fine. Wait, is he he actually isn't mega dead, is he? I mathed wrong. He's, he has one HP. Uh oh. Did I miss lethal? You guys can let me know in the comments if I miss lethal. I didn't see it. Like, I could have attacked with all three, and then he would have had to block, and the situation would have been the same. Okay, he kills Torbran. But can you kill this too? Oh, he can bounce it. Alright. He's surviving for now. So, again, we play Frenzy first in case there's a land on top. Which there is. Ugh, another one. Okay, 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 okay. Well, this is getting this is getting slightly scary. We only have a couple turns to work with here. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow, we had another one, too. Chain Whirler deals one to the face as well. Well, that game went pretty well. I think uh, pretty much exactly according to plan. We even had a slow start, too. Like, we had no no turn one or turn three play, and uh, we still just rushed him down. So that was mostly the power of Torbrand. Let's keep going. 1-0. All right. Well, we have a two drop. We have a multitude of two drops. We, yeah, this is a great hand. Obviously, I would prefer to have a one drop as well, but it's fine. We'll just kill whatever he plays at instant speed. Then curve into giant into giant. Oh, look. See, here we go. Perfect. There's no reason for me to kill this now, right? I can't I I can't figure out any way that he could get this to 3 HP without me knowing. I mean, he would need a pump spell. But he's going to play a creature or something and I'll just kill it in response. I'll take one here. My health doesn't really matter and there is a very small chance he might play a more threatening creature. So I think taking one is fine. Now we can just play the giant. Next turn we play the other giant. Both these giants deal damage to you if you target them. Pretty nice. Now, this one says, when he becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, 
Whereas this one just says target of a spell. So we do damage ourselves if we use Boulder Rush on the Bone Crusher. So it's something to keep in mind. Like next turn, the preferable target for Rimrock is Tectonic Giant. So he is healing himself with Clothis, which is not great, but we'll see. Question is, if he does target the giant with something, which option am I choosing? Three damage or exile a card? Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, I think <clears throat> five mana. So I'm thinking lightning strike and then both parts of Rimrock. Seems logical. Versus just Angrath doesn't seem that good. And plus if we draw land, we can play Angrath and Heartfire same turn. So this hits that. This hits this. And we'll go ahead and play this. Not that it really matters whether we play this pre or post combat, but... Wow, when he attacks or becomes the target. Actually insane. Um, Gotta take the damage, I think. Yeah, this card was such a good pickup. I, I actually can't believe that it wheeled. It's crazy. And this is just a creature or planeswalker, so we can't use this for face damage. But yeah, yeah, he's just dead. Wow. So many ways to kill him. That does deal two damage to me, so how about I just give everything menace? Never seen water burn. Well, that was another quick one, boys. <laughs> Deck is working as intended. Alright. <laughs> Oh, uh, one more and we'll have reached the baseline goal. One more one more win and I'm satisfied. But I think we can go much further than that if I play well. I think if I play well and we get a little bit lucky, I think we can go much further than three wins. But I don't want to jinx it. All right. Seems like a pretty amazing hand, to be quite frank. Um, two drop and then the turn after we play two drop plus skewer. Pretty freaking good hand. Only problem is the opponent goes first. Um, so next turn we have to decide between Ragehound and Robber. I'm thinking we play Ragehound first so that it has an opportunity to uh, get past Summoning Sickness so that we're guaranteed to have an attacker on thir turn three. We're not entirely guaranteed. He could remove both of them, but we're much more likely. If he bone crushes, I cry. <laughs> okay. Shiv and Fire is not that bad. Shiv and Fire is not that bad. Better, better to see than Bone Crusher. Oh, that's good to see too. He's wasting turn two, so. Unfortunately, we do not get a card here because he does not have more cards in hand than we do. Robber of the Rich. If the defending player has more cards in hand, then you essentially get to steal one of their cards. So, are we aggressive enough that we just let Skewer rip right now? I feel like no, because we have Torbran. It becomes so much more valuable after we play Torbran. I'll just hold it. Uh, another question to think about is Torbran versus Angrath next turn. Angrath, they, they both kind of let me get through for damage. I think Torbran is better. We'll just play this and attack. And, uh, whoa, we stole a lightning strike. What a pull! Good lord! <laughs> I mean, it's pretty nice when the opponent's playing mono red too. Fires? Okay, this this could get scary. But his deck seems so aggressive. Oh, that's a good good card. It's a good card, bro. Th oh, it has menace. I was like, bro, you know I could block that, right? But I'm stupid. I actually can't. Okay, okay. Another good draw, man. Another good draw. So I'm thinking we swing out. We'll have two two mana. Two mana for Lightning Strike. Because we have to play Lightning Strike this turn. Because who knows how much longer the robber will last. Two for Fire. two for And then one for Skewer. <laughs> Do I really want to Skewer face? 
Let's just attack. Let's see what happens. We might we might steal another. Oh wait, no. We we still have more cards in hand. Is is he dead actually? Yeah, he's dead. What am I thinking? That didn't even occur to me. <laughs> and we had we had five more damage waiting with Skewer as well. Yeah. I mean, pretty good. We would have won even without the lightning strike, too. We did, we did not need to get a lucky pull off of a robber to win that. So we're up to three already, guys. The deck essentially plays itself. I, this, this is what happens when, <laughs> when uh, the people you're drafting with let you have every good red card. I guess they didn't notice. Alrighty. Ooh, slightly awkward. Slightly awkward hand here. We really need to draw land for this hand to be good, but... Uh, I think it's a risk worth taking. We'll just play a tap land turn one. Turn two, we can remove whatever he plays. And then turn three, we can really get this party started with Anax. So we just got to hope we draw land. Once again, we are on the draw. And look, we got there. See? We're, we're all good now. So now we're just kind of hoping that he actually plays cheap creatures so that my removal has targets. Looks like that might not be the case. And again, like, we have to consider... Am I aggressive enough that I would Bone Crusher his face? I honestly think I am, right? Like, because I'm going to want to play... Oh, nice. That's good, too. Okay, so now we have another choice here between killing the Devil and just killing Tybalt. I think killing Tybalt is more sensible because... If we use this to kill that, he's just going to make another one anyway, so... We'll just kill Tybalt. Lightning Strike, it turns out, is a very, very good card in Limited. Uh, now we can play our boy. There's a question of maybe holding it, but like, this is the only thing that uses our mana efficiently, so... And then next turn we have the option of like, double 2 drop or a 4 drop. Oh, Mecha. That's actually not great for me. Because I already used my strike. Hmm. I'm thinking uh, it's Angrath time. So that we can set up something to kill with Heartfire. And that gives me some nice uh, devotion on Anax as well. Other option is we Bone Crush the Devil first, so it wastes the ping, and then we play Viashino, but it got Death Touch token. So I guess the question is, like, if we play this, he attacks it with Godzilla, am I going to block it with Anax? I, I I think I just like well oh we could also via Shino and Heartfire. But I, I think I like Anax here. You're just fuel for the fires of If you want it, fight for it. I feel like I can't attack, unfortunately. Cause then we lose Angrath. But well, Losing Angrath is actually not even a big deal. I think I attack. I think I, I value 4 damage over the Planeswalker. It might sound weird, but like we already can Heartfire with the army. I think it's fine. Death Touch Menace. Okay, see... it. We wouldn't have wanted the double block anyway, probably, so... I'm not I'm not all that busted up. I, I guess we would have double blocked, because he couldn't... Oh, no, wait, no, see? Because it has Death Touch and Menace, so... He would have killed on my stuff anyway, so we would have got punished. So I feel okay about that, for sure. Um, so this is instant speed, so... Uh, so if he blocks like this... Then we can bane fire this while the ping is on the stack. So I think that's the play. We def like uh, playing via Shino increases my devotion by one, which is good. But uh, 
that gives him an even better ping target. So I figure he's going to block and then try to ping the 2-2. Two -two. And then we can sack the 2-2 two -two to get around the ping. Wow, no block. So that changes things a little bit. Now I'm thinking we... Do I even really care about this thing? I don't think I care about it this turn. I think this turn... I'm just going to build my board a little more. <laughs> Opt, okay. We, we just have to kill this thing because it makes my Viachino bad, so... Yep. In my face, and then we'll just play this. Yeah, Heartfire... Wait, did I say last game that this can't go face? I was wrong about that. It can go face. I, I just read I read the words creature or planeswalker and assumed that it could deal four damage to creature or planeswalker. It, this can go face, which is a big deal. Wow, lifelink was a really lucky roll for him. But he didn't attack, which I feel like is a mistake. So uh, I'm thinking Viachino. Sack the Viachino to Heartfire to kill that so he doesn't get the lifelink. This this thing makes my life a little bit hard, but... So we need Anax to have four... Four power. It's kind of awkward. But I think we have to do it like this. Maybe we do it like this. Does that make sense? We lose two damage now, but we get an extra token. No, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thankfully, it asks, are you sure? This might be dumb, but I don't know. It makes sense to me. We get the extra token, and like, a 2-2 and a 2-1, not that different. And then once again, it's like, he probably feels like he's doing well because I'm running out of cards, but we got that Frenzy backing us up. Uh, I guess let's just see what he does. He's gotta have something. He have like flood of tears or something. He he does have six mana available. Okay, shark typhoon. Block the crusher. He's still at two. Uh, I actually think I prefer giant. Giant is just like so inevitable. And then we can just completely empty our hand just in case we need to frenzy next turn. Like what? What can he even do? He needs a board clear. Like, he needs exactly a board clear. Because he can't... Yeah, see? He just dies. Alright! <laughs> Guys, I told you this deck was good. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. I swear. <laughs> uh, you guys probably aren't going to believe me, but this is the first take. Uh, this is not something where... You know, I just recorded a bunch of attempts until I got a really strong deck. This is this is take one, so we're up to 4-0. Let's see if we can get all the way to 7. That would be nice, eh? All right. Pretty darn great looking hand again. Just need to draw land, but even if we don't, it's not that big of a deal because we have multiple two-drop options, so easy peasy keep. And we're on the play, too. Wow. Finally, we get to go first. Get in there, robber. Steal me some cards. What do we got? Baffling End? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Could help us get past a blocker. Although, we can only play it after combat, so... <laughs> Maybe not that relevant. Um. Well... I shouldn't have played that mountain. 
Because there is a slight question between Anax and Light Up plus Underworld. Let's just see what happens at, when we attack. Alright. The fact that he's doing this, I feel like Anax, obviously, is the choice. Because we can't even cast Light Up for its reduced cost. All right, that that's gotta get that's gotta get dragon fired. Act of treason will be really amazing if we draw. Uh, what's it called? If we draw the uh, that sack card. Uh, I guess prophecy is the way to go. But the thing is, like, what do I put to the bottom? <laughs> Honestly, act of treason. But he's clearly playing creatures, right? He might play something big. We could put the Rage Hound. But if we... Mm, it puts it on the bottom of our library. I'm just going to decline. So we get in. We light up the stage. Hopefully this draws us a land. And it did. Wow, it's even a tap land. That's like even more perfect. And we got a Chain Whirler. Alright, another land off top would be really choice. Oh my god, we just can't lose, guys. <laughs> I feel like I can't lose. I mean, look at <laughs> Anax dealing six. <laughs> Uh, and once again, like, the opponent really needs a board clear. If he plays a creature, I'd just steal it with Active Trees. And all right. <laughs> they gave me... They gave, they let me have all the good red cards, okay? this If you let someone have every good red card, they're going to win a lot. What can I say? Uh, what, what do we get there? Favored of Iroas. Don't think I even knew this card existed. All right, we're up to five. Two more and we get that perfect score, guys. <laughs> it's so rare that I make a magic video where I actually do well. You guys are used to me looking terrible. Not not exactly like this is like a high skill deck to pilot. You just run, da run out every card on curve and you kind of automatically win. But yeah, this is another amazing hand. And we're going first. So turn one Pyromancer, or turn two Pyromancer, turn three Rimrock both sides would have been nice to have firebrand on turn one but it is what it is we we'll probably just get shocked here but not the end of the world or bone crusher would be the worst outcome strike is not bad at least like <laughs> he had to use up his entire turn on it and it you know didn't give him anything good um so we could play Firebrand plus the 3-1, or we could play Firebrand and buff it, and then not play the 3-1. So the question is, like, do I want 2 damage now, or 3 damage next turn? I feel like since we're curving into Torbrand, I gotta get as many permanents out on the board as I can. Like, having a 3-1 makes Torbrand much stronger next turn. All right, it's just about party time. Now, the best top deck here would be uh, Frenzy. <laughs> All right, guess guess what kills that? It's Fanatical Firebrand. Absolutely absurd. And now this does five. <laughs> insane, dude. Actually insane. And then Anax comes in as a 6-3 absolutely insane man oh uh, that's not good enough man that doesn't that doesn't affect the board it's not good enough wow and chain whirler deals three to everything he's dead <laughs> oh i'm so evil man i'm so evil mono red so evil well we're up to a smooth 6-0 <laughs> Up to a smooth 6-0, boys. One more. One more, baby. <laughs> Let's see it. Wow, we got a match so fast. Okay. But now we're fighting other people who are probably getting up there in the wins. It does match you up against people who are doing about as well as you. Uh, I think this hand is a keeper because we have the turn 2 stomp. We have the turn 3 
giant and or chain whirler. It's fine. I mean, I would rather have like a proactive two drop or one drop versus a reactive two drop. But look, once again, perfect target. So we'll kill it right now so he can't take advantage of the mana. There's maybe an argument for chain whirling it, but like, I don't know. I don't really see that mattering. I think we just play giant now just on the off chance that uh, we actually end up getting some value out of the chain whirler. Plus it keeps our hand a secret because he already knew that we had this obviously. All right, this deals two damage, right? Oh wait, no, no, that's an ability, not a spell. This only is when he becomes the target of a spell. Technically, he's becoming the target of an ability of an enchantment. So, uh, Giant, I think, has to be the play. And we have the combo, by the way. Active Trees and Heartfire. We do have a very good combo. Okay. This isn't... This isn't an enchantment. Sometimes I worry, like, the Theros cards. I'm like, is this actually an enchantment? So, I think we attack, see if he makes the block, and then we Chain Whirler. Because if he, if he makes this block, then uh, Chain Whirler kills it, obviously. And I don't think we really care about the card off the top. We have plenty of cards in hand, like, we just need mana. So, he did take the block, so... Again, it was good justification for saving the Chain Whirler earlier. We did actually get some good value out of it. So there we go. Best draw is definitely land here, of course. But even if we don't draw it, it's not that bad. And Greth gives everything menace. A oh, sigiled sword, but no creature to attach it to. Well, pretty obvious play, I think. Now the trigger from the giant does five. <laughs> this is absurd, dude. This is actually absurd. Yeah, these don't have lifelink, though. Man, oh man. He's pretty dead, huh? He's just dead on board, essentially, because I have seven, seven burn damage in hand. Well, <laughs> I didn't expect this, guys. I really did not expect uh, this video to end up being so insane. Yeah, I mean, I'll let it all through. I don't see the point in taking any risks here. Not that blocking that is really a risk, but... I'd rather keep Torbrand on the board is what I'm saying. I don't think he can really do anything here. Yeah, we got him. 7-0. <laughs> Not a single loss. 7-0. This has got... I think this might be the most broken deck anyone has ever made in this draft. Like, come on. I have to screenshot this. I have to screenshot this because 7-0 is pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, there's the deck, guys. It's just everything good. Wow, we never even saw Scorch Spitter or Red Cap Melee. There's a few cards in here we never saw. The deck is just too good. It just has everything. It just has every good red card. Absolutely absurd. We even have Castle Embereth just to, just to rub it in. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Let's claim our prize here. Let's uh, maybe open some packs. Looks like we won, we won a couple packs here. And uh, we got a buttload of gold, too, by the way. Font of Agonies. Interesting card. And our other rare here, Mythos of Snapdax. Interesting card. You guys can see I've already got the pre-order in for Corset 2021. Oh, my God. It's five days away. I'm filming this on the 20th. Five days away. Absurd how quickly these sets are coming out, man. Here, just for fun, I'll show you guys the mastery tree too. I got I got one one thing to put in here. In case you haven't seen this before, these are just uh, full art cards and stuff that you unlock, and you get uh, the means to unlock them just by playing, doing quests, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the video, guys. Seven O. What more can I say? I feel like my work here is done. 
Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and uh, thank you so much for being subs to the Jam Casual channel. I know I don't upload on here that often, but uh, it's fun for me to have somewhere where I can upload stuff that isn't just fighting games. So I appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, let me know in the comments if there's any games or any magic formats or anything that you want to see on the Jam Casual channel. Let me know. So that's it, guys. Bye, everyone.